If you're having a difficult time transitioning from playing just rhythm guitar over to playing guitar solos, or maybe you've been playing for a long time and you just kind of thrown in the towel at leads, like, man, I just, I can't quite get it. I'm just gonna be a rhythm player. This video is for you. I'm about to share an awesome strategy and I want you to use this. I really want you to take this lesson to heart, especially if you're one of those that you felt like, you know, I, I've been playing rhythm for a while, but I just can't seem to cross over. I, I guess I'm just a rhythm player. That's not true. I want you to use this strategy I'm about to share with you. Again, take it to heart. Now, real quick, also make sure you hang around to the end of the video. I'm actually gonna share some tips that's gonna help you not sound like every other lead guitar player. So hang around for that. All right, so that's lick number one that I'm about to teach you. Very simple. However, let me disclose the, the entire strategy behind this lesson, behind transitioning from just a rhythm guitar player to a lead guitar player. What we're doing is we're actually playing a rhythm first before we play a lead, and that lead, that little lead lick there, somewhat matches that rhythm, at least it's in the same key. And we're going to do this for all three little lessons here, okay? We're going to play a rhythm part, and we're gonna follow that up with just a little lead lick there. And the reason why I'm doing this, again, this is the entire strategy behind this lesson here. Just this, you could probably take this strategy and just stop watching the video. I want you to keep watching, by the way, but I'm serious, you could take this strategy and just kind of run with it. And we're gonna talk about that more as well. Let me give you some other little tips on how to take this strategy and, and expand on it. But we're gonna keep it simple, okay? For this lesson, we're gonna keep things really simple. We're just playing an E minor, a C, and a D, okay? And we're gonna do this little pattern for each lead lesson that we're gonna go over here. We're just gonna play that first, then we're gonna go into that lead pattern. So again, here's the chords. And you don't really have to play this in any particular cadence if you don't want to, just kind of play whatever. The idea behind it is just to get some type of rhythm before going into that lead. And then this kind of helps us connect the two together. So let me play that lick for you and then we'll go over that little lick that I just played, okay? Here we go. So what I'm doing here is, is I'm starting out on the B string. I'll put the tabs up here as well. Starting out on the B string 10th fret, right? This note right here. But I'm bending that. I'm bending that a whole step, but I'm doing something else a little different here. I'm actually bending it twice. So just practice that because this alone is just a really cool technique. You know, you, you hear guitar players bending strings all the time. It sounds cool. It's a great technique. But when you do something a little different, just a little extra, you're like, whoa, what was that? That sounded cool. I'm not used to hearing that. So that's why I want you to bend that thing twice, not just one time, okay? Bend it twice. It's really quick there. Really quick bend and then go right back up. As I go back down, I'm going to play frets 7, 8, 10, and then I'm going to end on the G string on the 7th fret. Now, you may have noticed something with my picking hand that I'm doing. As I'm playing that note, ringing that note out, I've got my fingers kind of placed down here like, well, Jason, what, what are you doing there, man? So here's what we're doing. Okay, so that note that we picked, G string, right? So what I'm doing is for that, I want to mute those surrounding strings. So for the D string, I've got my thumb placed on that after I strike that note. 
for the B string, I've got my index finger on that. So I'm not, you have to be careful with this because you won't want those fingers touching the G string. Other, otherwise, you're going to muffle that note. It's not what we want to do. What we're doing here is we're, we're preventing any string noise from ringing out, okay, when we're, when we're just milking that note. So instead of this, I got lucky, no string noise. But sometimes if you're playing in a live setting, if you're on stage and you're hitting that note, well, your amp's cranked up, the sound's cranked up, so there's there's a tendency for that string noise to happen. So this actually wasn't going to be part of the lesson, but I like to share these things with you as we're going through these lessons because they're extremely relevant. So yeah, all I'm doing is I'm just I'm just muffling those surrounding strings, right? The surround the note that we're hitting. So let's play that through one more time. All right, so again, same chord progression, E or E minor, E power chord, C, D. Then we go into our little lick here. This time we're just gonna play some, some higher notes. And the cool thing that you'll notice here, and even if you're a beginner, I want you to catch this. If you're a little bit more advanced or at the intermediate level, you know, you probably caught what I did. I did like a little rake, not quite a sweet pick there. We're not gonna get into that today, but just a little rake, just that bloop, it just sounds really cool. It just adds flavor, like, you know, kind of adding flavor to a steak. Now I'm hungry. Let's not go there yet. So let's take a deeper look at this, okay? Uh, the strings that we're raking here, and I'll show you, I'm kind of raking them and palm muting at the same time. So you get that, you know, and the strings I'm on are the D, G, and B string. Okay, so let's turn this up. Now, one thing I'm doing here is as I'm, as I'm palm muting that, as I'm palm muting, I'm also kind of rolling, if you can see this, I'm, I need another camera up here somewhere, I'm kind of rolling my finger as I go, okay, just kind of rolling that because we're, we're essentially barring those notes there. Palm mute and roll. And you do this very, very quickly. This isn't one of those uh, elegant type things that you have to just get perfectly because you're not, you're not doing this. You're just... So remember, as you pick down and palm mute, this finger, this finger is going to roll a little bit. Okay, it's just going to roll forward or roll backwards a little bit. All right. So now for the notes, and that's all on all on the twelfth fret, by the way. So what we're doing after that? Real simple. Okay. As, after we do that little rake, we're going to go twelve, thirteen, fifteen on the B string. Then we're gonna walk it right back down, but we're gonna kind of go back and forth a little bit. Then we're gonna head over to the G string. And you see, I like to milk those notes. I love to milk the notes. I know I'm talking about milk a lot. <laughs> I like milk too. Uh, but again, you see me using that little technique with my fingers there to muffle those those strings. So let's go through that one more time and then we'll, we'll do the last pattern, okay? <laughs> All right, so this last pattern again, E or E minor, C, D power chords. Uh, and again, there's not really, I don't really smoothly go into the lead pattern as you just noticed. I don't want you to get caught up into that. What, what I want you to grasp here is we're playing rhythm, then we're immediately switching to lead. So we're kind of wearing both hats at the same time. And again, I believe, okay, I believe that this kind of triggers something in your brain and just kind of helps your, your brain put those connections together. I'm used to playing rhythm, but now I'm trying to play lead. Well, hey, I'm going from one to the other. So the, so the transition up here is a little bit smoother. I believe that, okay? So I hope this works for you. <laughs> hope this strategy works for you. What we're doing, I'm gonna play the riff and then we'll kind of break this down because there's a few different things going on here. <laughs> 
Let me slow that down, okay? Because there's a little nuance in the beginning here. What we're doing, this is really cool. We're actually starting out on an open string. I don't know if you caught that, if you heard that, okay? Because it's very snappy, very quick. But we're actually, we're actually hitting the open, we're picking rather the open, we're not hitting it, we're picking the open string, the open A. As soon as I pick that, I'm going to hammer down, right? We're just picking one time. I'm going to hammer down on the fifth, then the seventh fret almost right away. So if you need to just stop and pause the video and just practice this little riff, okay? So it's kind of like a, a riff meets a lead lick. Yeah, kind of the same thing here. Now, as soon as you do that, we're going to head over to the D string, all right? And we're just going to walk it up three notes here. Not a big deal, pretty simple, but there's a little cadence that I'm playing, so make sure you kind of grab that because it, it just helps the flow of this lead lick here. And I'm picking all those notes, and all we're doing there, we're just playing the fifth, seventh, and the ninth frets there, okay? And that's all we're doing. Now, after that, we're going to go to the next string, the G string, and we're going to go all the way down to the seventh fret there. We're going to pick up on the seventh fret. So we're seven, nine, and we're not doing a full bend there. A full bend would be going all the way up to that 11th fret note, right? But we're kind of doing. And then we're going right back quickly to that seventh fret. So seven, nine, half bend, seven. I want to go through this one more time. We'll start out with the E, C, D, and then we'll, I'll go through this kind of slow and then I'll play it at regular speed as well. Alright guys, now we're going to get in some deep stuff here, so just hang out with me for a couple more minutes. But first, let me just throw in my quick plug. If you don't have my free practice guide, grab that. There's a link in the description of this video to get that guide. And if you already have that, the next step would be naturally to get into my Metal Riff Master Ultimate Metal Rhythm Guitar Course. If you're not in that already, there's a link for that as well. If you don't have the guide, download that first, then you can check out the course. Alright, before we get into this, All right, that's much better. So, okay, here we go, guys. When you play guitar solos, when you think about lead guitar, I want you to shift your mind and take it to a place that asks the right questions. And those questions are, what are these notes on my guitar saying? What are they vocalizing, okay? When you think of lead guitar, I want you to think of it as being the vocal line, okay? And the lyrics as well. And I'll explain what I'm talking about. So, is your guitar solo that you're playing, and I don't care if it's if it's three notes or 50 notes, is it telling a story? What story is it telling? Is it kind of angry? Is it kind of aggressive? Or is it just taking you on this like this really amazing mystical journey? Is it is it kind of sad? Is it kind of melancholy? Like, what is the mood of that? What what is that guitar trying to say? because it's trying to talk, it's trying to sing rather, not talk, it's trying to sing. Now, the other question you would ask is, okay, is, is it doing those things? What's the mood? What's the feel that I'm trying to capture here? Or is it just, blah, 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 is it just gibberish? <laughs> okay, and that leads me to my next point. And this is where I want you guys to really hone in and, and not be like every other guitar player out there. And, I, and I'm not, I don't mean to generalize, it's not what I'm trying to do, but when I'm scrolling, through YouTube and, and other social media platforms, and you guys see this too, it seems like 90% of the guitar players you come across are just playing the same boring sweep arpeggio patterns up and down the neck. Now, the caveat, they're probably playing different sweep arpeggio patterns, okay? But it all sounds the same because that's all they do and that's all I hear. I am not knocking sweep arpeggios. I'm not knocking shred. You guys hear me shred. You guys hear me play sweep arpeggios. What I'll tell you, and I'm, I'm going to admit a mistake here, I actually think I shred too much. And I'm actually trying to back off a little. 
and I really like this next album that I'm working on. I really, I really want the solos to speak. I want them to sing. I want them to tell a story, right? I don't want it just to be, hey, look what I can do, like Stewart on Mad TV. <laughs> I give that analogy quite often because I love it, but you know, he's like, look what I can do. I don't want it really to be like that. Yeah, there's a time to showcase your talent. Okay, that's that's fine. But if that's all you do, if that's all you end up doing, then your your guitar is not telling that story. Okay, it's not taking that person on that journey. So, I, I just want you to hear me out here. I don't want you to allow yourself to get caught up as you progress. You will progress going through this lesson. You will get better, you will get good, you will get great, okay? You will do that if this is what you want to practice, okay? You will do that. As you progress, don't allow yourself to get caught up in to, well, now I can play fast, so everything's got to be fast. What I like to do is I like to break my solos up, and I'm trying, again, I'm getting better at this, okay? I'm calling out my own faults. I'm sharing this with you guys, because I don't want you to fall into the same trap that I was caught in for years and years and years and just kind of recycling the same fast solos over and over. Even if they're different, they sound the same because everybody's just playing so fast and I was trying to play so fast. But I'm really trying to break up my solos and saying, okay, well there's a section here, I want it to speak out and sing these lyrics per se. Okay, I want it to, I want it to capture a certain mood, this part. This part here, I kind of want it to lead into something else. And this third part over here, maybe I shred. Maybe I do a sweep arpeggio or something crazy. It's like, oh, okay, that was cool. Then maybe I finish out with another melodic pattern. So that's how I want you to think in terms of guitar playing. And, and even if you're new watching this, again, as you progress, as you practice, you will get better. And you will get to the point where you, I think anybody can shred. I think anybody can learn to shred. Anybody. It depends on what you want to work on. If you don't want to work on shred guitar, that's fine. But still, still solo, still play leads. Like listen to bands like Pink Floyd. Man, that dude makes every note count. He doesn't play a lot of notes, but oh my God, those notes, they're some of the most memorable guitar solos in the history of guitar, right? They captivate you. They're speak, what did I say? They're speaking to you, they're singing to you. They're saying something to you. So I just want to kind of throw that out there. Don't get frustrated that you're not as fast as you'd like to be. Don't let yourself get frustrated. But don't don't try to sound like everybody else that's doing the same thing. God, it gets just so boring, so old, and it's just so lifeless. Again, I'm not knocking shred. I'm not knocking the talent that it takes to do that. It takes immense talent to do that. But remember, you've got people listening to you, listening to your music, and you want to speak to those people. You want your guitar solo to mean something to them, not just to be Oh, look how fast I can play. And then you leave them with that. It's like, okay, well, they're on to the next one because there's, there's 10 other people they're going to watch that can play just as fast as you, maybe even faster. <laughs> you know, So don't let yourself get caught up. Instead, play that meaningful solo. Give it that, just give it that voice. Give it that life. That's what I want you to do with your solos. That's how I'm asking you to approach your lead guitar playing. Play fast when you get to that level, or if you're already at that level, sure. Throw it in there from time to time, just not all the time. All right. I'm going to get off my soapbox now. I'm going to finish my coffee. Give this a thumbs up, guys, if this video helped you. I hope that it did. And I really appreciate you guys you know, being here, being on my channel, and, and watching this far into the video. I absolutely appreciate that. Don't forget the links that I talked about earlier in the description of this video. Stay tuned for the next video. Until then, keep it metal.